Take heed to yourselves, because if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day comes back to you and says, I repent, you should do what? You should hold it against him until he gets it right, right? No, you should forgive him. And the apostles said to the Lord, you have got to increase our faith. The Lord said, if you have faith, even like a mustard seed, you can say to a mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots, be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff packed in this verse. And I want to make um, three points today. But Jesus said something here that is um, really important to us. He said that um, you're going to have chances to get offended. And I will say this to you, that we live in a culture that is um, so fragile and so offendable. How do we live differently than the culture? You know, um, years ago when I first started in ministry, um, I would hear sermons or I would read uh, articles or study scriptures, and I would just file stuff in a file cabinet. Y'all remember file cabinets? Those big metal things? <laughs> um, now they're all digital. It's easier to access. But so as I would study for messages, I would go back and I would pull out um, articles or points or sermons that, that I'd seen. And, and I remember this. I, I saw Mike Stout sitting here. I remember years ago, he preached a sermon on offense. I was a, a, probably a teenager or a young adult. And never heard that word before. Filed it away. Uh, didn't pay much attention to it. And one day, God started talking to me about offense. And um, that's all I had to study by at first. Obviously, I found um, additional scriptures and information over the years and have taught on this. And it, it is a topic we need to embrace to really have freedom in our heart. Progressive freedom in our lives. God wants you free. Um, he doesn't want you bound like the rest of the world is bound. And so Jesus gives us some great instructions. So you ready to make some points? Here's the first life point this morning, and it's this, that getting hurt is unavoidable. Staying hurt is optional. Getting hurt, according to Jesus, is unavoidable. But staying hurt is optional. Actually, I would submit to you that the number one trap of the devil is offense. It's the number one trap of the devil. It, it's offense. The number two trap of the devil is to get you offended about someone else's offense. But I have seen over the years so many people that are, uh, they go to church and they trying to serve Jesus and following him and, and they do love God. But I've seen their lives just get stuck in ruts. And one of the biggest reasons is guess what? They've gotten offended. But this is one of those topics that we think, oh, this isn't about us. We would never get offended. But I tell you what, that other person I know, now they would get offended. So it challenges all of us. I do believe that some people, um, you, you, you just get stuck when you get offended. And, and the Greek word for offense is a very interesting word. It comes from the concept of an animal trap that is um, like a, a cage or a, a, a wooden crate. And there's a little piece of wood that holds it up, and bait is put in that trap. And when an animal goes for the bait and hits that wooden stick, it falls and they're trapped. That wooden stick in the Greek is called skandala. It's the word we get for scandal. It's the word for offense. So for you to get offended is a trap that the enemy has set for you. And when you fall into offense, it's a scandal, it's a trap. It is a snare in your life. It's something that you trip over, something you stumble over. It's a pitfall in your life and my life. Offense. Isn't that interesting? It's our English word for scandal. And, and, and here's, here's how this happens. Something happens, an action. Let's call it a hurt. A hurt happens in your life. Some action has happened towards you or to you. Then there is your response or your reaction, I should say, to that action which is usually offense, and the problem is that reaction becomes a condition, and it's called bitterness. And if we are not allowing the Holy Spirit to free us, we can live uh, very bitter and still try to love Jesus. 
we can live very bitter lives, very resentful lives, very um, uh, uh, just a scandalous life. All because of an offense that has happened to us and our reaction to that. And I, and I was um, studying my way through this, this sermon and, and, and under the first point that getting hurt is unavoidable. Jesus said it. But staying hurt is optional. Jesus said, basically, one translation would say that you're crazy if you think you're not going to have opportunities to get offended. Jesus said that. But woe to you who let yourselves get offended. You'd be better off to tie, tie a millstone around your neck and be thrown into the water. Well, that's serious language. And I think there are three reasons why you don't want to get offended. Number one, it damages you. If you want to take a picture of the screen there, you can. It damages you. It distracts you. It will detour you. Here's what I mean by it damages you. It will wear you out physically. It will wear you out mentally. It will wear you out emotionally. And guess what? It will wear you out spiritually. How many of you have ever had a hurt happen to you? Well, is that not true? It just wears you out. So here's why you don't want to let yourself get offended. Now, you can't stop the fact that there are going to be opportunities to get offended. There are going to be times that people say or do something that hurts you. Those things happen in life. But when you let it become offense, you're letting yourself fall into a scandal. And it will damage uh, damage your life. It will exhaust you. They say that 75 to 95% of illnesses are a result of, guess what, people's hurt people's offense, people not getting over things that have happened to them. So it absolutely affects you um, uh, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. And here's what happens. If you allow yourself to get offended and you stay offended, it's going to spill over into your life. It will spill over into your career. It will spill over into your relationship with, with your spouse. It will spill over onto your kids. It will spill over into every area of your life, even your walk with Jesus. I have a good friend. Uh, many of you met him, Pastor Steve Munns, and he says, if you are not careful in this area, you will get an STD, a spiritually transmitted disease. <laughs> but think about that. It, it, it can be transmitted to you, and it is like a spiritual disease in your life. It will eat at you, wear at you. It will just damage your life. Not only will it damage you, it will also start to distract your life. In other words, you get really focused on the things of yesterday, and you're not able to live in the important things of today because you're stuck on a moment in time, something that has happened, something that is going on. Do you know that 60 to 70% of people who leave a church leave because they have gotten offended? And you know, growing up as a teenager in church, Going into ministry as a, a young guy, working with young people, um, transitioning into being a, uh, a lead pastor now the last several years, which means I've been doing this a while. Uh, I never thought I would see the offense that I have seen in the church world that I see. And Jesus warned us about it. Jesus talked to us about it. Our heart, Pastor Diane and, and me and, and our team, our heart is that we have a staff and we have a church that we live unoffendable. Now, um, thank you for the three people that are excited with me on that. Um, And and I would summarize it by just saying this, that don't drink the poison. Don't drink the poison. Um, we uh, We are family. We are brothers and sisters, and that's why we get our feelings hurt. But we're to be unoffendable, the Bible says. So it will not only damage you, it will distract you to where you can't live out your purposes and your plans and the will of God for your life. You can't go to the levels God wants you to go. Yeah, you'll go to heaven, but you're going to be miserable going there. And I do know people, what happens when we, we get offended, we start making these personal vows. I'll never let that happen. I'll never go there. I'll never do this. Ne- and we make these vows. Here's the problem with an inner vow is it makes you God over that situation. And you cannot, there is no way for you to act divine over that situation. 
But I do know someone who can act divine over your situation. And that's why Jesus warned us about this. Not only will it damage and distract you, it has this way of detouring your life. And, and here's, here's one, one thing that I noticed that when we get offended, it just starts attracting us to other offended people. It's a, it's a really weird thing how that happens. I know people who can't stand each other, but when one of them gets offended, they find each other and they become besties. I have seen it happen time and time again. So what happens is, is when, when you get offended is it attracts offended people to you and it, and it, and it keeps healthy people from you. And it, so you see the pattern. We get damaged, we get distracted, and it starts to detour our life. So here's what I want you to hear, and I, and I put this down. When we get hurt, we have this tendency of allowing it to become the story of our life. When it does not have to be the story of your life, it can just be a chapter in your life. It could just be a page in your life. Do not let it become the chapter or the major theme or the major topic or the trend of your life. There's actually a scripture in the Bible, you can just jot this down, I didn't put it on the screen, but Psalm 119, verse 165 says this, if you, you, if you will love the word of God, you'll be able to overlook offense. Now think about it. The key to living without offense is just loving the word of God. Now, that's why John chapter 8 that we started in, if you consistently stay in the word of God, you'll know the word, the truth, and it will set you free. If you love the word of God, guess what? You, you can live a life without scandal. Well, think about this. If nothing is a scandal to you, you can't be ensnared in it. And you can't live, and you can live, I should say, like you have never been hurt. If, it, if nothing can be a scandal in your life, let me use a different word than scandal, drama. Don't look around, just look straight ahead. <laughs> but how many of you know, just nod at me, know someone that just drama follows them everywhere? Don't look around, just look at me. <laughs> I don't look around. I... Drama just follows people. Do you know what? That's a spirit. That is a spirit that just follows people because they have allowed it. There's always something that someone has said, it just it becomes dramatic. But if we can live without scandal, we're going to be able to live free from hurt. And Jesus doesn't just tell us to do this. I'm going to tell you in a little bit how to do this. So if I said to you, you're never going to have your feelings hurt. If I said this to you, no one in this church will ever step on your toes or hurt your feelings or not notice your new haircut. I would be lying to you because <laughs> we're all human. Now, I don't think that we, anyone would ever intentionally do something like that. But I'm just telling you, we have to. We have to know this, that, that staying hurt is optional in our lives. Something hurting us is probably unavoidable, but staying hurt is optional. Life point number two. Yesterday's hurt does not have to mess up tomorrow's hope. Yesterday's hurt does not have to mess up tomorrow's hurt. Let's take a poll. How many have ever been hurt? How many have ever been hurt by family, by your spouse, by your boss, by your neighbor, by a church? Somebody kept your hand up for everything. They're just like, yeah, I'm, just, I'm all of them. But if we are not sensitive and aware and obedient, something that happened in our yesterday will mess up our hope tomorrow. And hope is the result of faith. It's our expectancy, not a wish. It's just knowing I'm expecting this. It, yesterday's hurt can mess that up if we allow that. Now, this isn't a bad faith statement, but um, you will have pain in life. Jesus said it. He warned us against it. But listen to this. Pain doesn't have to leave you the way it found you. And, and what I mean by that is pain has this profound way of changing us. But we get to determine, as a believer, how it changes us. Actually, Jesus said this. What was meant to harm you, 
I will actually turn it for good. What the enemy designed to destroy you, I will actually produce. If you allow me to, I will actually change you and mold you. Only Jesus has the power to do that. Actually, um, pain can be part of life. And, and just like your natural body is made to heal, do you know that the rest of you is made to heal? It's the way Jesus made us. Because God's creative. He is a healer. And if he made you, he also made your body, your heart, your mind, all of that. If we're obedient to him, he made all of that with the capacity to heal. But what happens if we don't allow ourselves to heal is we fall into what I call pain patterns. There was a time in our life we were wounded by the words of somebody, wounded by the actions of a parent, wounded by the actions of a father, wounded by the actions of a spouse, wounded by the actions of a friend. And, and so we, we're wounded, and if we, are, if we do not allow Christ to heal us and walk in freedom, that becomes a pattern for our lives. And the thing about patterns, we can call them ruts, patterns, routines. They become routine. They, they're repetitive. They, they will happen again and again and again and again. And it can become the pattern of our lives. But I want to submit this to you. You do not have to accept once hurt, always hurt. You don't have to live with that mantra. You do not have to um, stay with that being the pattern of your life. The moment you met Jesus, you met the capacity to get free. From anything and from everything and from anyone and from everyone. Now, Jesus said this in the Bible. He said that what you need to do is have a little bit of faith. Because he said, not only are you going to get offended, it might happen seven times, seven a day. And he, he did not say, strike one, strike two, strike three. Jesus said, if they keep repenting, you got to keep restoring. And the disciples, the spiritual giants that they were, they said, okay, Jesus, if this is true, our faith has to increase. So we see that, that this is a faith thing, like everything else is in our walk with Christ. It's a faith thing. And they said, you've got to increase our faith. And Jesus said, well, it starts... With just If you have just enough Jesus faith, even if it's the side of a mustard seed, if it's Jesus faith, do you know the Bible says God gave you, the, he gave you the same faith Jesus has? That's enough for you to forgive. That's enough for you to heal. That, that's enough. A smidgen of Jesus is enough to set you free. A, a, a moment, a micro is that a word? <laughs> um, bit of Jesus' faith is enough to free you. And Jesus said, if you have that kind of faith, you can grab the mulberry tree, pull it up by the roots, and toss it aside. I did a little bit of study on why Jesus talked about the mulberry tree. Some translations say the sycamine tree. Because it's an, inter you know, when Jesus said something, there's always more depth to what he said than what's just before you. So a sycamine tree or a mulberry tree is a tree that grows in very desert-like conditions. In the most arid places, without any vegetation, you can find this type of tree in, in, the, in the Middle East. And the reason why you see it in the middle of a desert is because it has these extremely, extremely deep rooted, a deep root system that goes way down into the dry, arid areas to find some, some type of water. And Jesus said this, you have got to get a hold of this thing by the roots. How many know there's some things that can get rooted in us that we were offended by? Jesus said, the reason he uses this illustration is because that type of tree has a very deep root system. Another interesting thing about this tree is it had a very bitter tasting fruit. And they called it the poor man's fruit. If you were poor and you couldn't afford sweeter tasting fruit, you would eat the fruit from this tree and it was bitter. I'm telling you, offense will make you bitter. It will leave you bitter. It will not leave you free. 
the wood from this tree was very, very hard, and the only thing it was used for was coffins. I'm telling you, offense will keep you in a place of death. And this, another interesting thing about this tree is it, it's not naturally pollinated. The only way this tree is pollinated is wasps would sting it. And how many know offense, hurt, stings? So Jesus wasn't just talking about your average tree. He was talking to them about a tree they knew was only good for coffins, only had bitter fruit, had a deep root system, and they, uh, they would identify it with the sting of a wasp. And things hurt, challenges, things happen in our lives, and it, 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 it's like a sting. It, it's deep-rooted, and it's only good for things of death. And Jesus said, we have to learn not fall into that scandal. So I want you to hear this. Will hurt and offenses, are they unavoidable? They're not unavoidable, but staying that way is optional to a believer. And something that happened yesterday needs to stop affecting your tomorrow. It will keep you from the next level. It will keep you from, I'm going to tell you, it will keep you from peace. It will keep you, it will keep you from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It will keep you from joy. It will keep you from freedom. Several years ago, I, I had a, a, a friend of mine, actually the same friend I talked to you about the um, sexually, or the, I'm sorry, the spiritually transmitted disease. Um, <laughs> I told myself all week to make sure I said that right. <laughs> Anyways, he went through a situation several years back, and um, he was... He, he was at an event speaking, and uh, that this church that had brought him in had just really, really did him wrong. And God started speaking to him. And he, I mean, I was there. I knew the story. I'm not, I can't share it, but he was done so wrong by this church that had hosted him. And he said, you know, I was going to get on a plane and fly home and say, forget this place. And God dealt with him. He said, well, you can pass this test now, or you can take it again later. <laughs> and he said, at that moment, he realized he just needed to stay, work through some things, and let God work in his heart. He said, because I didn't want to take that test again. I mean, no, we don't want to take some tests over. Yeah. It's better that we deal with it right here and right now. Last life point. Y'all getting something good so far? Yeah. I want your heart free, because it affects everything in your life. That's why the Bible said, guard it, guard it. Pay attention to the boundaries of your heart. Last slide point is this, is forgiveness is your friend, it's not your foe. What power could God recommend, suggest, or command to operate out of your life and my life that would free us from the bondage of offense? Because it's a bondage. Well, the answer Jesus gave us is forgiveness. And if you've been in church any bit of time, you've heard this word. Oh, we're supposed to forgive. But I want to camp here for a moment because forgiveness is your friend. It's not your foe, even though it's challenging. And I want to read this to you the way I put this down Forgiveness is not about doing someone else a favor by forgiving them. It's actually doing yourself a favor for forgiving them. Because sometimes we think that way. Well, that means I have to do them a favor because they did me wrong or they did this and they do not deserve it. I'm doing them a favor. No, you're doing you a favor by forgiving them. It's not approving of the offense. It's not saying that it was just. It's not denying the pain. It's not forget, forgetting the injustice. Forgiveness literally means to let it go. If you're looking for a deeper theological definition, you don't need one. It literally means that you make a choice by faith to let something go, to release it. But it's not doing someone a favor. It's doing, doing you a favor. And I heard someone saying that when someone does something to you, um, and they've harmed you, if you're going to stay in unforgiveness, it's like drinking poison and expecting it to affect someone else. 
And it's not fair that someone else has done something to you, and now you have to deal with, the, with, with, with what's left over, the feelings, the emotions. And, and here's the thing. The disciples didn't say, Jesus, you've got to increase our feelings because we live in a messed up feeling culture. Jesus didn't say, well, I'm going to inspire, I'm going to um, energize your feelings. They said, you, you've got you've to energize our faith here, God, because it is a faith thing to forgive to let something go when someone doesn't deserve to be let go for what they did or what they said or what they have. But here's the deal. It's affected you all of these years and it can affect you all of your tomorrows unless we can come to a place with the help of Jesus to let it go. Now, now go with me to Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus is teaching. He said, listen to this truth that I'm going to speak to you. Whoever says to a mountain with great faith, and he doesn't doubt, and says, mountain, be lifted up, be thrown into the midst of the sea, and if they believe what he says will happen, it will be done. This is the reason I urge you to boldly believe for whatever you ask for in prayer. Be convinced that you have received it, and it will be yours. This is the famous faith verses that Jesus taught. We sang that song a little bit ago, he's too good not to believe. Jesus is talking right here that you have to believe when you pray and you shall receive it. The famous faith verses, Mark 11, 23 and 24. But look what he says right after, right in the middle of talking about faith, which we know that faith is the key, faith is important. In the middle of talking about the importance of faith, look what Jesus says. And... Whenever you stand and you're praying, maybe you're talking about praying in faith, whenever you stand and you're praying, if you find that you're carrying something in your heart against someone else, you have to release them and you have to forgive them so your Father in heaven will release you and will forgive you of your faults. In the middle of faith, we're a faith church. We are faith people. We are word people. And if we're going to be word people and faith people, we've got to be forgive people. It's right here. It's connected. And Jesus said, but if you will not release them and you will not forgive them, you, you cannot expect forgiveness to flow and affect your life like you need to for your misdeeds. I just want you to think about this. Yeah, but they said this to me. I think you probably said some things too. They did this to me. I think you probably did some things too. My point is, Weren't there some things that Jesus has freed you from and forgiven you from and not held against you? And Jesus is saying, if I have forgiven you, well, they lied to me. Well, I'm sure you cheated somebody. Well, they, they did this. Well, I'm sure. In other words, y'all got the point? Jesus is saying, I have wiped your slate clean of a lot of stuff. Let that be motivation for you to say, I am going to choose to release them. I'm going to choose to forgive them. I'm going to choose to rid myself of this toxin. And you can't do it because you feel like it. You've got to do it by faith. You've got to do it by your faith. You know, sometimes we're mad at someone for one thing when we're really mad about something totally different. That's why we carry offenses. Somebody offended us. Which means sometimes we have, a, we have some bigger things that we were offended about in the past. And now we get, we struggle to get free in some areas. Some things, my wife calls these things triggers. Something triggered up a feeling. Something triggered up a thought. An action triggers. Isn't that what you're going to triggers? And because of some pattern of wound that's happened in her life or something happened to him, it continues to get triggers. I believe God wants to set you free from whatever happened, what has made you feel like, and the triggers going forward. Because, now hear me, Jesus doesn't want, he doesn't just want you to feel some freedom from something that happened for a feel-good moment. He wants to set you free from its power going forward. He wants to release you from its power in your future. Because how many of you love being victimized? 
I mean, if you have watched uh, many things on, on the news lately, we see the violence in our street because we thought it would be a brilliant idea to defund those who protect us. And so we see people on the streets being victimized and robbed and beaten. It's just crazy that this is America and we, we witness these things. Well, no one wants to walk out of their house down the street into the supermarket and be victimized in any way. So if you knew that you were about to walk into an area where things like that occurred, would you not be a little more on guard? Would you not be a little more aware? Would you not have your spider senses tuned in? You're, you'd be ready for your, your, you know, your ninja moves, right? You, you would be, you, you, you'd just be aware. That's why Jesus is saying, Being, be aware. Because there is nowhere in the word of God that he wants you to continue to live as a victim. Jesus was not a victim of the cross. He was a victor. You are not a victim of your circumstances. You're a victor of those circumstances. Can I read you one more scripture and give you, give you, give you something really good to help you? Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26 and verse 27. Um, look at this scripture. Don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. I mean, our emotions can get flared up. Okay, not yours. Sometimes mine do. Don't let anger control you or fuel you for revenge, not even for a day. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to what? Manipulate you. You know what the enemy wants to do is manipulate you. He can't control you anymore. He used to. He can't control you anymore, but you know what he has to do now? He has to manipulate manipulate you. He'll take, the devil is, um, and his little demons are, the best picture I could give you is they're like rats. Have you ever, um, or cockroaches. You ever been down south where it's really hot and driven around behind like a restaurant and you see the dumpster? You ever notice what you see hanging around that dumpster? Cockroaches. Probably some rats. Why? They're attracted to the garbage. The devil and his demons are attracted to the garbage, the wounds of our life. It comes to the wounds and they whisper to manipulate us. It's time for you to get out of that dumpster. <clears throat> time for you to get out of that dumpster. Because the Bible says this, that if we allow this in our lives, a different translation says, don't give the devil a foothold. It's, uh, it's where we get the word for topographical map, which means you give him a point of entry. Now hear me. Offense gives the devil a legal right to have his foot in the door. Did y'all hear that? It gives him a legal right to have his foot in the door. And you can be like, devil, get out of here. And nothing happened. Because he has a legal right to have his foot in the door. Because of offense. Now, I don't know about you, but this many people here and this many people watching, um, we've all been offended. We've all been hurt. Don't look up here at me and think, well, he's Pastor Aaron. He, uh, he's Superman. He's never offended. He's never been hurt. No. Um, I, I, I have overcome areas of offense. I have felt in areas of offense just like you. But I will tell you from experience and from studying scripture, um, it will damage you, it will distract you, and it will detour you. So what, what do we do if Jesus says forgive? And when Jesus says forgive, he's not minimalizing the injustice. He's not minimalizing the pain. He's not minimalizing any of that. He's just saying the only way to live free is forgiveness. So I, I really, really studied and prayed on this. I said, because I, I like to make things simple. I'm a simple dude. If I can understand it simply, I feel like I can explain it simply to you. I want to give you something to walk out of here with. And it's these three things. How, how, do, I, how do I actively get free in my heart from these things? 
First of all, you have to decide to release them from judgment. You have to release them from judgment. No, God, they deserve to be judged and judged harshly. Remember, it's a faith thing. Father, I, I'm deciding to forgive them. That means we have to take what they did, what they said, and what happened and release the judgment. Here's what the judgment could be. Replaying it, rebuilding the story, making my conclusions about it and what should happen to them and my opinion and just giving it to God. Or you're going to have to remain God of that situation. That's where it starts. God, I take this. How many have ever been in a situation, you may have even prayed in a church service, I forgive them, and it starts replaying in your mind. And then you start vividly building on it. I've done it. You've done it. And rebuilding our case. Rebuilding our case. Rebuilding our case. That's when you need to, out of your mouth, needs to say, I release them. I release them from God's, I just, I release them. I said, I don't want to. They don't, they don't deserve it. But neither do we. I release them. Secondly, is you choose to pray for them to be blessed. The Bible says, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. And that scripture is not for someone else, that's for me and you. I, several years ago, um, a few years ago now, some of you were here at the time, we, we, we um, went through some things as a church from, from a staff member. And this, this became one of, the, one of the biggest tests of my life. Um, hopefully you guys know that Pastor Diane and I go to great lengths to have a church of excellence and integrity and character. And when all of that stuff is lied about, and you told that you took money and that you're a racist and just the stuff, um, I wish I could tell you that my first reaction was, well, bless the Lord. <laughs> my first thought was, snapping back to playing a defensive back in football and um, who could I hurt thank goodness you know I'm, Jesus got a hold of my heart and my wife got a hold of my heart and I just had to I had, I had to release stuff and I kept saying well, I forgive I forgive because that's the Jesus thing to do but I was with my wife and we were at a, a one day conference with some people that we knew because here's what happens the devil always makes you think that whatever happened to you was the worst thing that's ever happened to anybody. And I'm sitting there with my church offense story, and I'm hearing um, this guy speak, who, who I know and I've met, and it happened to him three times. All of a sudden, my situation didn't seem as bad as his. But the devil made, and here's why things hurt, because we love. Some people can say something to you, passing by you at the store, it may annoy you, but it doesn't hurt. But if you know them and you're in a relationship and you love them, when they say and do something, it has the power to destroy. And I'm sitting there and Pastor Joe said this. He said, here's how you get free. Every time that the feeling or the thought comes up in you of offense what happened, you need to pray for them to be blessed. Like, That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They need judged. <laughs> and I, we got to talk to them later, and they ministered to us, and he said, there's freedom that comes in that. I want you to think about this. Someone who has hurt you, free, uh, uh, wounded you, Jesus said, bless them. Pray for them. Well, they don't deserve to be prayed for. Well, no. But weren't you glad someone prayed for you? And you pray for them to be blessed in that area. And, and you know what? All right, I'm going to try this. And this is what it sounded like for God bless them. Just bless them. <laughs> it was by faith. And 
then I realized somewhere I kept saying it every time the thoughts came, God bless them, just bless, bless their lives, bless their, bless them, just bless them. Sometimes I couldn't even find the words. And somewhere in all of that, there was freedom. Because here's what I know. The devil doesn't want you blessed, and he doesn't want them blessed. So every time he brought it up to you, and you're praying a blessing on them, he doesn't want that either. He will eventually back off. Because he doesn't want you blessed, he doesn't want them blessed. And I'll say this to you. you, 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 you um, it takes faith. It takes faith. But there's freedom in it. God bless them. Bless their money. Bless their wallets. What do we want to be? We want to be the judge. Well, God just, hey, their car broke down. They deserve it. That's what you get. I mean, we think like that. That's what they get. You know what? You want to live like that? Be like that? What you sow, you reap. But you're not in charge of their harvest. The Bible says he's the Lord of the harvest. Then it became God just, just richly bless their lives, bless their lives, bless their lives. Because every time you bless them, it's obedience, and it gives God an open door to guess what? Bless you. Now here's the third thing underneath of that. I gave you a lot of threes today, I know. Decide to release them from judgment, choose to pray for them, and look at the letter C. Determine to repeat as necessary. Determine to repeat as necessary. Let me ask a big question. How many of you have ever had to deal with an offense and forgive someone? Okay. How many of you um, gave it to God and like a year later, like, you remember that time they did that to you? How many have ever had that voice? And the devil's like, you didn't forgive them. You, 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 they don't deserve forgiveness. Repeat is necessary. The disciples said, you've got to increase our faith. Jesus said, seven times 70. In other words, it, sometimes it's a process. We need to repeat it as much as necessary. Remember I said freedom in your heart is progressive? Freedom in your mind is progressive? Freedom in your mouth is progressive? Well, guess what? Freedom in your heart is progressive too. And when it comes back up, what do you do? Don't start rebuilding. Don't start refueling. Guess what you need to do? I have chosen to forgive them, and God bless them, bless them. You might have to keep saying, I release them, I release them. I re and don't think of it, well, I just release them into God's hands. He, they let them burn in God's hand. No, you just release them into the goodness of God. Release them into the goodness of God. Because you know what? It's the goodness of God that leads people to repent. It's the goodness of God that, that delivers people. It's the goodness of God that I helped somebody this morning. Can we stand for, for just a moment? Can we stand? I, I've, I've read this story one time. Um, it's, it's about a, a, a tribe in Africa. They're called the Zulu tribe. And where they're at is, is um, overran by these ringtail monkeys. And it's also a delicatessen to them. So here's how they catch these monkeys. They will take some type of container or a log and they will hollow out space for uh, one of these monkeys to put their hand inside of this container and inside they put this fruit that these monkeys can't resist and the monkey will reach in and grab the fruit now they can take their hand in and out but when they make a fist and grab the fruit their fist will not fit through that hole they have taken the bait they will not let go of it and they come along and knock them over the head kill the monkey dinner but think about that. That's a trap. And the devil's going to come along and, or we can let it go. If the monkey would let it go, he could get free. But if you don't let it go, guess what? We can't get free. Here's how I want to close the service. I'm going to ask our altar response team to join us up here. We're going to sing this song. As we sing this song, and you know I am struggling to let something go. We have people here during the song that just want to pray with you. You don't have to tell them every detail. We don't need to know every detail. You just might need to say, I I've got to let this go. You say, well, why would we have to come up here? Because this is an act of faith. 
It's just an act of faith. Now, I gave you, every week I've been giving you an assignment to take home with you. You can, you can, you can do that later. But if you know right here, right now, why the Spirit of God is moving, I just want to come up and say, I, I need to let this go. Pray for me. Um, we're going to do this song together, Pastor Diane. We'll close here in just a moment. But um, I, I, as I was praying this week about God, just how, how do we end this? Do we say, because you know, some morning it's like, thank you, we'll see you next week. And some moments we need to stop and make sure at this moment we don't leave this building like this. And if all you need to say to them is, I just, I just, I release this. And here's what I would encourage you this week. Don't keep picking it up. Say, how do you pick it up when it starts going? And if you offended someone, do what the Bible says. Just go to someone and say, sometimes I act stupid and do things and say things I shouldn't. Please forgive me. And you need to say, you know what? I forgive you. I love you. That's how we do life in the family. Because it works. Have you ever seen a family who won't do it like that? What do we call them? Dysfunctional. Why? Because they've dissed the function. But we're functional here. Amen? Amen. Let's worship. Let's worship.
praying for people here and if you still want to come forward and have prayer um, they're just going to keep doing what they're doing and um, as I mentioned we gave you a, some homework to work on this week it says on here I forgive blank for blank I release them from my conclusions and I pray they'll be blessed um, I encourage you when you spend some time with Jesus this week just work on that work that out how about we say this together? I choose to forgive. I'm grateful that I have the Word of God and the capacity to be a forgiver. No longer does it clog my heart. I have a healthy heart. I choose to love the Word of God so much. I stay, I stay out of scandal. I choose to release that offense and the offender. My spouse, my neighbor, my family, my mother, my father, my ex, whoever else it may be. <laughs> Amen. 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 such an amazing message, wasn't it this morning? Oh, yes. Um, Can I say this sure. real quick? You say, it's not easy. It, if it was easy, you wouldn't need faith. But faith is the key to every blessing of God. So, no, good. Say that. so good. 